Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're hoping to turn this into this. Coming up next. Yep, that's right, we are uh, finally fixing our front suspension. We are still waiting on our uh, new strut. Um, apparently the furnace wants to turn on. Anyways, we're waiting for our strut. It was supposed to be here today. I guess it'll be here tomorrow, along with some more parts, but we're just gonna get going on it because, well, we got our new tires on, and man, these tires actually look really nice. Check these out. Got some nice meaty Pirellis. Here's our new, uh, our new wheel. The tread on these, these actually have tread on them versus the other tires, so that's pretty awesome. Run flats. I'm getting a host of new parts in here. We got our new fender a couple of days ago, some of our inserts. I did go ahead and order a new wheel liner or fender liner uh, because A, this has a couple of mount points up here and I want to make sure when mud slings it does not get up here and stuck uh, down in the uh, bumper area up here where the def tank sits and whatnot and under here on the rear half of the liner it is also broken away as you can see and that would allow mud to travel right down um, in that belly pan and stick between the uh, bottom of the uh, foot wells and that belly pan which is no good also in fun news today xpo logistics dropped off our golden ticket kind of whatever you want to call it, our bumper. Yeah, it's not the right color. Um, it's missing parts, but I've got all these parts. Uh, I do have to do some little bit of patchwork. There's a little bit of scuffing here, uh, but go ahead and just clean it up, scuff this whole thing up. And I think with a couple of coats of primer, this is really gonna clean up well. There's no significant damage other than these scuffs, which a little sanding is gonna knock these rough spots down. A little bit of paint chip off here uh, but all the tabs are intact got our mounts for our uh, pull our sensors our front camera which now i have and our washers um, there's a lot of plastics on the back of here we'll be going through uh, upcoming but it's nice to get that i picked that up off of ebay motors for about a hundred and 150 bucks and uh, then uh, 200 bucks for freight shipping. So all in, it's not so bad considering, you know, the new ones from BMW are roughly $1,000 to $1,200, depending on where you look. And um, the next closest one I found that was new, a third party part was $820. So for a fraction of either that, either of those prices, I have a BMW branded part albeit needs a little bit of uh, refinish work and paint. It's at least a OE part on the car. Uh, Fender, I got that. That was not an OE part, 170 bucks versus 600. Simple math. Math that allows me to get new hats. Check these out. Hopefully we'll have them in our merch store sometime soon if I can find a vendor or a way to get them from this vendor in some quantity um, or have you order directly from them. That'd be nice. Uh, but I'm not uh, big, of, big of a fish yet to have a uh, specialized branding store outside of Spring, and they don't do hats. So here we are. Went ahead and pulled our def tank out because this bracket was a little uh, bent up, so that's back in shape now. I ordered originally a new, uh, what was listed as a shock absorber, an FCP Euro, uh, without a picture, right next to all the other shock absorbers, and they actually thought it was this foam crash pad here so I now have a new one of these because shipping it back was $85 and the part was a fraction of that when all I really did was break this little part uh, I think partially by myself and partially from the accident so more new parts did I need that no but I have it so I'm going to use it uh, also I did go ahead and reorder a new one of these uh, metal brackets for the uh, passenger side headlight this one, while it's pretty well straightened out, you can see is still a little uh, oddly shaped. And uh, when you put on the headlight, it's not gonna match up perfectly. So I wanna make sure that I've got the best chance of getting things lined up uh, without the headlight being cockeyed. So bought one of those, another hundred bucks down the drain, but there you go. Uh, I've started working out this 
bend here. A little bit off camera because nobody really wants to see me beat on this thing for two hours. Uh, we're almost there. We've got this whole corner to bring up a little bit. Probably about three eighths of an inch. Then it'll be really close to being where we need to be. But until I get the fender on there, that's where it sits. Back to our task at hand. We've got our suspension stuff to work on here. And we've got our control arm. This here is our rear control arm. Down here, we have our front control arm here. And here we have our strut bracket, which bolts onto there. So I'm gonna get all these pieces unwrapped then we're gonna go start playing around in here. I assume for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna to have to pull off the caliper, the rotor, the dust shield, um, but none of that really interests me. So in the interest of kind of being lazy, I might just try and get bio taking off as little as possible because I really kind of want to get this thing back on the road and drive it. Well, alrighty, we're off to a great start. I, I'm all full of grease already. And these appear to be some special nuts that I don't have. So all sorts of uh, fun. At least I know I can get this thing off to get the uh, shock out. Um, I need to take this whole thing off up here to get to the uh, three bolts for the uh, shock or strut, whatever you want to call it, because this is leaking. Um, yeah, I've got to take off the belly pan or part of it. There's some uh, few pieces right here and some bolts I've got to get at. Same thing for this rear one back here. And uh, what I'm seeing, I don't see any actual damage on the frame that I've been able to spot. Uh, just of course that control arm, which that should not be bent like that. So yeah, you can see right, right down there, right there. That's where that strut mount should attach. And you can clearly see it's broke. So I'm gonna try and find the right tools and uh, come back when I can start getting this thing torn apart. Just kind of what I expected. All right, we're back. We took a trip to the uh, good old O'Reilly's in town, picked up my uh, 27 mil 12 point socket to go ahead and get all of these little uh, interesting nuts off of our suspension components like that. So I got the one off on the tie rod end and there are two left, one on the uh, front of the, con the front control arm and the uh, rear control arm on the lower side and that should uh, free up the bottom of the uh, knuckle and then probably going to have to uh, take off this here which is probably going to be a 13 mil or something um, so we can essentially drop this whole thing off and uh, start seeing what other carnage is behind here that I don't see. So let's just knock this stuff off. You know, not like I have a shortage of tools and sockets, but it's these specialty guys that get you every time. Also my half inch ratchet is at my father's house. So I get the breaker bar. That was easy. That was much easier. I did go ahead and take the fender well out. Um, it's getting replaced anyways, like I said, but it also gives me a little more room to work in here, especially up front here. So that's, uh, that's a bonus I have now. Uh, control arm and the tie rods loose or at least the nuts are off. We have this uh, strut here which is firmly wedged in place um, against the CV shaft so that's not going to be fun quite yet. Um, I think I'm going to see if I can pound out uh, I can't get that lower control arm out yet because it's pinched in by the bracket for the strut. 
actually, oh, maybe we are loose. All right. Still not quite enough to pull out the strut yet, but uh, if I can pound up the control arm from the bottom, maybe we'll be able to, uh, well, let me grab my pickle fork and see if that'll work too, because we're not reusing any of the uh, ball joints out of the control arms. Those all get replaced. You can see those are oh, integrated into the new control arms. These are just a protective cap for shipping. The tire right in there I do need to keep. So I'm gonna try and be gentle with him. You know, I'd put on my bumper just to see how it fits. I'm gonna take it off. But I'll at least give you a little sneak peek. Overall, the thing is in really good shape, as I was saying. Probably the worst bit of damage right here. And that can get cleaned up pretty easily. But it looks a lot better with the, with the front end on it. Now, if you remember when I brought it home, kind of this whole corner was missing. So that's uh, nice to have that back. And I'm not really worried about damaging these threads. So we're gonna get out the uh, larger persuader and see if this helps. I don't have a whole lot of room to swing, so. Oh, that was easy. How about from up here? Two, and how about the uh, front control arm? Oh, that was easy. It's just hitting the axle now, so. Yeah, definitely my leaking shock. And dripping. <sighs> Washer fluid hose. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy off up here and hopefully I can pull things forward and out. I still wanna try and do it without taking off the caliper cause then I gotta put it into maintenance mode for the brakes, I believe, and take this stuff off and it's just a big mess if I can avoid it. I think this is gonna have to come off anyway so that uh, CV shaft can come out. Yep. With larger than a 27 inch. Of course, well. Oh, and those were peened over too, even better. There you go, you can see on this nut, the edges were peened over, so it really can't back itself out, which means in order for me to get it out, I've got to open these up, and if they break off, then I need to replace the nut. It's just all sorts of fun. But I've got to almost certainly pull out the CV shaft to replace the boot, because it is a one-piece boot versus a universal uh, slit boot. I, I might just change and put a slit, slit boot on it because I, I don't know, we'll see. And what I've been doing is going through underneath, there's a bunch of eight mil bolts uh, to take off the belly pan and some of the skin, which allows me to get back here at the back end of the control arms. And I wasn't terribly surprised to see it. And I checked it in advance, but I don't see any damage back here. This is not uh, the actual framing here where the control arms bolt up to. It's not bent, it's not tweaked. You can see, uh, you can see it's not, uh, not bent and twisted out of shape by any means. If I can get you in here kind of straight. 
Everything looks nice and straight like it should, you know, except for that control arm. Let me show you back here quick too. Uh, tough to see, I guess. But anyways, uh, we'll show you more in a minute, but this area is, it's all kind of a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting the, uh, the frame side of these control arms out, probably a couple of 17 inch uh, bolts again. So I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of penetrant and let them soak for five, 10 minutes. Then we'll come back and uh, hopefully knock them out pretty easily. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can zzz zzz these things off of here. I got them started, at least loosened up. Um, front here is an 18 mil and the back is a 21. So as long as you've got those, you should be good. Unlike our um, strange size thing up here. So let's go ahead and just knock these off quick. That was easy enough. Like I said, I'd already knocked them loose, so I didn't, uh, so I didn't uh, destroy your ears with the impact for those of you that wear headphones. So those we can get out, uh, go ahead and knock those bolts out and the control arm should come out, except the front one may not because we've still got to get that, uh, uh, get the rest of the knuckle, turnbuckle, whatever you want to call the thing, this thing. We've got to finish getting that loose. We can pull it forward and get the uh, CV shaft dislodged. So uh, that's next on our thing. And of course I don't have that size uh, socket and it's uh, after nine o'clock and the tool store is closed. All right, let's see if we can pound out this rear one here. It's still binding up here, so it's being uh, a little troublesome. There we go. Now, that is uh, that is not what it's supposed to look like. It's, uh, yeah, that's, that, um, yeah. Neat. All right, let's see about the front one here. Just for a quick comparison, the right one is the new one. The one on the left is what was coming out. So no wonder we had some alignment issues. Yeah, I got this guy here, I've got to tap out from the back, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. I don't have a lot of room to work back there. Especially with you in my way. So I don't know. What do I got? <laughs> I got nothing to hit. Nope. Alrighty. Well, I actually did find my 32 millimeter socket um, late last night, but here we are the next day. And uh, what I need to do is, like I said, knock off open this up so I can get this nut off, knock the axle through a little bit so I can pull out the other uh, front control arm. Um, but in order to do that, I need to sort of st straighten this out and keep it tight. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the new uh, rear control arm here, just uh, between the frame and this knuckle here uh, to keep it somewhat steady so I can knock off, knock this axle in and keep taking things apart uh, the rest of the way. Also, as I thought, this nut does come out, the bolt goes through, and this is uh, this joint here is grooved so that it does not pop out. So I've got to finish getting this out. We've thrown some uh, penetrant on it, let it sit overnight. So we'll see how that works. And uh, yeah. All righty, we're back the next evening, and I actually did late last night, or later last night, find my 36 mil uh, socket. So I did not have to go get one of those from the uh, parts store today. I did go ahead though earlier uh, and knock that nut off. You can see it is missing and I've tapped the uh, CV axle back in 
Um, pretty much, if I can even find it anymore, it's here somewhere. But on the nut, there's some little splines um, or tabs that you kick in. Where did I put the darn thing? There it is. There it is. Showed you this before a little bit, but these little uh, areas here were pounded in, kind of peened over or staked over so that the nut wouldn't back itself off. Once I got those opened up, hit it with my impact, that spun off pretty easily. And uh, I need to push it back a little bit farther so I can get the uh, lower control arm out. You can see a little better now some of the carnage back here. Oh, let's grab my light. Here we go. So you can see the CV boot is shot. Um, what I did do today is pick up a universal boot because in the event that this thing is not simply splined in, um, I don't want to take everything out of the uh, vehicle side and just make a giant mess of things. So I'm just going to put a universal boot on there and call it good. Um, hopefully that holds up. But uh, really, I'm just going to work on pushing this back um, about three quarters of an inch so I can get this uh, end of the control arm out. You can see there's not much clearance there to get, uh, to get it out. But if I push it back far enough, I can. So that's my next step. We're going to go ahead and work on getting this uh, uh, CV axle push back a little bit, get the control arm out, then we can start reassembly. Which brings me to another topic. Uh, I was supposed to have the new strut today. That got lost somewhere in Madison after the label fell off the box. I, I, I'll just leave it at that. So that should hopefully be here tomorrow Meaning, maybe tomorrow now, I'll be able to get enough parts back on it so I can at least get it out of the garage, A, to see how that paint looks, and B, to move it around a little bit so I've got a little bit more room in here to get things like the golf cart out, uh, move some more tools around, and uh, have some space to get this front fender and bumper prepped for paint. Uh, but the main goal is just to get all four tires back on this thing and off jack stands. I know it's going to have to go back up uh, for all the, uh, all the little plastics underneath on the belly pan to the bumper and everything, but I want to get it down the driveway just to actually make sure it runs and drives and there's no other mechanical issues uh, that I haven't seen so far in the 300 foot drive from the shop up to the uh, house on the busted rim. So uh, biggest thing I'm concerned with is do we have to go in for an alignment afterwards here or did we simply just beat the crap out of the control arm and everything else is fine? That's kind of what I'm hoping because uh, with a couple of things that have gone over budget here, like the headlight and the camera missing and a couple of these plastics that add up really quick, I'm kind of done spending money. It's not a flip car, but I've still got a budget. So let's get this taken apart and start reassembly. All right, we got this out. Pretty much all I did was I put and took my uh, half inch breaker bar and pushed it against the uh, <clears throat> CV shaft here to push it back far enough where I could get this whole assembly out of the way. Control arm comes off. Now I can get that bolt out of there, start reassembling things, but I need to take a look at this. And this is just a giant disgusting mess. So I need to clean that up. I'm gonna get this uh, strut, uh, primarily the mount off right now because I've got to do a bunch of work up in the engine bay to get the, uh, <clears throat> get the strut itself out. There's some stuff that's got to come out. So hopefully I can just wiggle this guy out. I've already loosened it up. Get enough stuff out of the way. Not carve any more fingers up. That'd be great. There we go, here's my leaky strut, my broken strut mount. Yeah, that's toast. It's blue shop towels from the home store. They're pretty awesome. So, let's go poke it around in here a little bit. 
I have a large greasy mess. We have a seal or a metal band here that has to get cut off. We have a metal band here that has to get cut off. And then this boot should pretty well come off, but I need to go ahead and clean this area out. A, just to make sure I don't have any contaminants in here for reassembly. And B, I need to see if there's any damage done to any of the components in here during the accident. And I don't know how these come apart. So I need to look that up. And just know I don't want to take apart the one on the vehicle side because that one currently is in place and happy. So my goal is to get this thing cleaned up and out. I don't see any of these balls are falling out in my hands. So that's a bonus. All I see is a lot of grease. So what I was looking for is like chunks of dirt in here and rust like that piece I just dropped in there. So I had to go ahead, get some gloves, get this area, get this stuff removed. And then I'll be able to go ahead and figure out what I'm dealing with. All right, well, I've got my old front control arm out and here's the new one and side by side I can't really tell that there was any damage to this one in terms of alignment but up here this is cracked and as long as I'm replacing everything else up here that had damage it doesn't make sense to leave this here. For the small amount that it cost, $70, I think, as I knock my camera over again, for the 70 bucks or so that it cost, it's worth it for the peace of mind and not having to do it again. Then I'm just gonna replace them. And you can see there's some, I think these are fork marks from, eh, it may have been from the loader at Copart, who knows, just because it was sunk so far down and now I'm even more disgusting and greasy, wonderful. Um, what I was going to say is, I don't see that there's a big difference in alignment, but if this one was stressed, if it's off a degree or two, it's of course gonna throw off the alignment. So we're just gonna chuck him in the uh, spare parts pile. So we've got this, we've got our bolt that goes back in it. That was undamaged. And now I can find some gloves and work on getting this cleaned up here. Uh, we may come back once this is all cleaned up because really all I'm going to be doing is uh, cutting off this existing boot and taking off these two uh, metal bands, probably grab my Dremel out, nobody wants to hear that, and get this cleaned up, make sure there's no chunks of metal or anything else uh, that could potentially damage this uh, CV joint. Do a little bit of research online see how easy it is to disassemble it. Cause like I said, I do have the proper uh, back only boot to go on here, but I don't know that I want to disassemble everything just for that. I did go ahead and get the universal boot, um, which I'm okay with using if it's going to be three hours, four hours less pain in my butt. So now that I've been hunched over my front end here for so long, I'm out of breath cause I can't breathe anyways. We are nearly to the point of putting everything back together, and that, frankly, is going to go a whole lot quicker than taking everything apart. The good news is I did not have to take off this top uh, bolt here, so I can go ahead and just tighten everything back down here. He'll be happy, and that'll be good to go. One last thing we do have to do, like I said, is our strut, uh, but if I can get this all cleaned up, put back together, um, that's going to leave me with a lot less stuff and grease and grime floating around in here. You can see it's gone ahead and leaked down um, 
the strut shaft, whatever you want to call it, to my caliper. We've got grease back here to clean up. Uh, I didn't see any damage in this wheel bearing in the hub, so I assume that is okay. I guess we'll know that once we get out driving, if we feel any uh, wiggling or uh, hear any noise, but hopefully that's good to go. I assume our sway bar is good. I don't see any damage on that one. Uh, the end links look good. They're not broken. And I think they were recently replaced or maybe it was the, the tie rod ends. Either way, there was some front end work done up here not too long ago. So uh, hopefully we'll get that done or sorry, not get that done, it's already been done, but hopefully we don't have to do anything else for parts up here. And we can just reassemble it, put on the tire, and move on to paint and putting it back together completely and getting out on the road after I sort this whole DEF tank out thing. Apparently there's a preheater in here for the DEF fluid. Um, some of the mounting holes were damaged, so trying to fix that, get it seated back in there where it should go, and uh, make sure that is all good to go and doesn't leak. And uh, all of our wiring. Got a new bracket for the headlight coming in tomorrow as well. So hopefully within a week here, we'll be back on the road or at least be able to drive it. And uh, it'll be a few weeks before you see the finished product, but um, this is a big step forward. I'm not seeing any more damage that I'm overly concerned about uh, having to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, joint cleaned up and we'll come back when it's time to get everything reassembled. Okay, we got our CV boot uh, started to be assembled last night and uh, here it is. It's simple. Two halves. We use good old uh, Loctite to get one side of it stuck together. And now I've got to go over and fit it onto the uh, CV axle and stick our big pouch of macaroni cheese sauce, oh wait, grease, into uh, the boot, slide it in place and put on our uh, little binders, rings. And I'm a little worried that this may not fit in the, uh, in the space. This top might, uh, rub but we'll see and if it does rub we'll just grab the one out of the uh, back only kit because so far it's been more expensive to return anything than to just keep it so we'll see how that goes but for now let's go ahead and fit it onto the axle and uh, fill it full of grease now let's see how dirty and disgusting i can get with this it's supposed to just slide around unless i got glue where i shouldn't have gotten glue here we go let me just come in from the back side here. Try to stay clean as possible. Oops. Try this side. Slide it around. And on. Pretty easy. And I'm already dirty again. I got five minutes. It's like I'm working on a Ford. All right, so. I'm gonna slide this forward a little bit more. And I'm gonna go grab our big baggie of grease. Ah, really? And I'm gonna shove it all in here. And then what you do is you pretty much slide the boot down over here, crimp it up, and then you do the same thing in the back. And there's actually a recess on the uh, shaft where the boot fits into. So you go ahead and uh, crimp this down in the back and then pull the boot over this uh, and here, cinch it down and you're done. Just like macaroni and cheese, but greasy. Try and keep some of the grease out of the boot because I do have to glue that together. I'm gonna hold this straight, so that's gonna be a challenge. Again, normally a person would take this out of the car, but I really had no desire to do that. Uh, so what we've gotta do is grab our Loctite and split this open again here Put the glue in here, squish it back together, and let it sit for a bit. Oh, that's the side I already glued. Let's see if I can pull some of my grease up 
off of the outside of the joint because that's just going to make things messy. Er. All right, we're going to leave that there for right now. Here's my open side of the boot. If I can manage to keep you out of the grease this time, I came in, there's a huge spot of grease down the tripod. So I'm gonna split this here. We've got a couple of holes here to put our Loctite in. It's essentially cyanoacrylate adhesive which is great for bonding plastics. And there is a little groove that this fits into. So we're just gonna fill up the groove with the glue. And if this stuff gets on your fingers, it takes a long time to wear off. So be wary of that. As I just squeeze it all over my fingers. Wonderful. Squeeze it together here. Without everything coming apart on me, that would be great. Alrighty, I'm gonna let this dry and come back and get the end once this part here is dried up. Alrighty, well, the boot is on there. I'll admit it's not the cleanest thing in the world, uh, but it's on, it's gonna keep the uh, goo outside from going inside. See, we've got our second seal here all closed up. I'm just gonna let this sit and dry for a while. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have to trim this ring off. The instructions said maybe, depending on fitment. It's more of a two different size option here. And uh, if I don't have to trim it off, I'm not going to, just so I can uh, keep a little more gunk from running in beside here uh, into the uh, hub area. But uh, for now, I think it's gonna be okay. But with that, I'm gonna wrap this up because uh, FedEx still has our strut somewhere on a truck. And uh, I'm kind of done waiting. So I'm gonna wrap this one up because it's probably getting way too long anyways. So we come back, our next segment's gonna have the uh, strut uh, replacement and uh, final reassembly of the rest of the stuff on here, the control arms and uh, in the front end button back up so hopefully we can put the wheel back on and go for a drive anyways thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you all in the next episode bye bye